What's up, y'all? It's your boy Leon. I'm too cool. This is Action Geek. Welcome to my channel. Like if you like my review. Subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. Do reactions, do reviews. About to dive right into Dear White People Volume 2. This was a great season, y'all. Like, I'm just gonna, like, let me just disclaimer. I really think the cast is fantastic. Like, they're astounding. The way they performed throughout was amazing for me. Let's dive right into episode one. Sam's episode, chapter one, was really intriguing to catch up, basically. Sam's episode was catching up and getting, you know, Sam's passion, the thing her father really loved about her. Uh, it was an interesting take because they start you off like two weeks after the event of season one's finale and you see how AP has integrated in a sense that since the other house burned down and you're also dealing with Sam with cyberbullying, but she was letting it slide for a little bit. Then she, you also saw her interactions with everybody where they are, like the awkward lids with Reggie, uh, her and the best friend situation. You also got Lena, Lena was funny with her reality show. That was hilarious. Her awkwardness with Gabe was also a situation. Gabe's documentary was also brought up. Then also seeing her get her power back in a sense when she was on a roll, you know, with the cyberbullying situation. Um oh yeah, another instance was dear right people. That yeah, yo. Like, if P white people actually do that, they'll, they'll be taking it too far. Like, on the most serious note, they'll be taking it too far. Also got a glimpse of a relationship with her father. She was kind of mean to her father, which had ramifications later on. I'll down on that on the episode 9, as you know, if you watched the season. Anyway, that, that last shot she got hit with by that internet troll, about the whole monkey situation, yo, that was that was messed up and it hit close to home because if you know about the history of South Africans, we were legit called monkeys. Actually, most black people were called monkeys. I'm going to dive right into episode two, chapter two. This was the Reggie episode. The Reggie episode was interesting because you, you saw the dynamic of what Reggie used to be and what he is now, especially after the incident that happened last season, episode five. How he's dealing with PTSD now, how he had to in, had to go to counseling, which they made him sign for, so he wouldn't sue the school. Also, his roommate, that dude, killed me throughout this whole episode. He had a lot of one-liners that were just amazing and funny as hell. We also got to see an in interesting dynamic with him and Troy and Kurt, like to see that. Without the race thing, these guys would actually get along. You also got to have a moment where you saw deeper into Reggie and Troy's relationship that they used to be so tight before before the whole Sam situation. And you know it was the Sam situation. You're like, yo, these guys were best friends. Sam must have been the ish. Also, Troy gave him the advice that, yo, you know, using being victimized because he was victimized throughout the whole episode. You can use that as a tool to get laid and he started using it until he, it got boring for him. Um, another interesting dynamic, his and, his and Joel's relationship also hit rock bottom in a sense when she was performing a love ballad, I think by Erica Badu and he was spreading up with a bunch of girls which made her upset, of course. Um, we also got an interesting dynamic on the Dean, because the Dean was humanized in this episode, how he was there for Reggie, that whole conversation they had, making him find an outlet, would happen, which happened to be Gabe's documentary. I want to see. I wish they released Gabe's documentary, because I really want to see that. Then we dive into the next episode. This was Lionel's episode. This was Lionel's self-discovery, in a sense. He was trying to explore his sexuality, get out of his own comfort zone, trying to find a place where he belongs. 
Troy tagged along in Troy fashion. You saw him with Sylvia, I think that's what that dude's name is. You saw him and and them get closer, but also get far apart at the same time. You also saw the introduction of Wesley, who plays a more important part later on throughout the season. And you also found the um, the discovery of the new independent newspaper and how that came about. It was rooted from this third episode. Not really that much to talk about in that episode. The episode that had a lot to talk about was Coco's episode, which was chapter four. This episode was a lot to digest. You saw Coco and her ambition, first of all, how she was the black voice like the black voice for the white people if you understand what i'm saying she was the gateway she was helping white people understand black people more but also going for the crown the core yeah that's what they talked about it if you want to talk about her friendships you know like who are really her friends because coco i don't know who's on her side really okay the other girl kind of proved it that girl who had the support dog, I forgot her name for a second, but she kind of proved th this episode that she's Coco's friend. She had the pregnancy scare situation. Troy also popping in again, but basically he was in his room the whole time this time, especially except that moment in the dream sequence, which I'll talk about soon. Like, this was just a crazy episode. Like, I have to talk about the, the camera framing in the show like it's so breathtaking like you have to appreciate the effort the, the thought provoking the director treatment for the show must be crazy good like cinematography is fantastic like coco's episode was one of those highlights like it was emotional but it was real on top of that that whole 18 years later time jump situation where you saw her when she gave up her dreams to raise this beautiful girl who would end up sending her to college she was going to live out her dream she saw that but it also showed her that's what she wants not what her daughter would want and making her make the decision she took at the end and you know, it was like a powerful moment a powerful statement like it was crazy chapter five this was the joel episode there yeah, was the joel episode where Joelle joined their white people, you saw she was top scholar, she was always on top, Like, but now she's been playing second fiddle to Sam, and you saw it mostly in the first, their white people, they both shared, and, and it was crazy, like, you also saw her meet this new guy, Trevor King, that's what his name was, I think. Oh, I forgot to talk about the guest starring, this was a big episode where you had the people from the movie, their white people, Tessa Thompson and Tyler Williams. I forgot his middle name, but you know who he is. The dude from Everybody Hates Chris. You saw them both interact in this episode. Show how they acknowledge the existence of the movie, but they also using it to their advantage, which was amazing. You saw those two big pool moments from that movie be in opposing sides having opposing arguments which was crazy you also saw uh joelle inside her mind did you see that crazy moment where she was talking to uh trevor king and i don't know boom she was in a bra it was a crazy moment then they also went deep into the secret societies like that was a big moment and it had a big moment at the end that shot they took at empire in this episode that was funny i couldn't stop laughing and the the, the person Trevor Kings ended up being so messed up, yo. Yo, like he had the whole AP house against him at the end, which was understandable. His thought process, he, he internalizes things too much, which will cost him in life, in my opinion. Then jump into episode six, another Lionel episode. This is Lionel's big story, Secret Society, which he thought was involved with Sam's troll. Sam's troll was also a big part. That whole bitch thing with the banana at the door that was so messed up. Another thing, like the monkey shit should stop. You saw him and Wesley's relationship get closer. You saw him and that 
dude, was, I forgot it's Sylvia, yeah. It built a little better working relationship, but he felt like he was in charge, even though it was like another idea. I, I felt weird about that whole moment. Also, him and Brooke had this whole team up moment where they were trying to uncover who the troll is. They ended up finding out a lot of things like who stole the dog? Kurt is not as bad as you think he is. Um, Reggie used these hacking skills in this episode. Him and Troy had a bonding moment. He almost had his first time in this episode and he also found out who the troll was, who was his first kiss at school, which was a dynamic that kind of shaped a lot of the rest of the season. Yeah, let me just now let's dive into episode uh, 7, chapter 7. This is Troy's episode, one of the best episodes for me because he was discovering who he was. And they didn't end it on some, now I know who I am. He just kind of found his voice and the path forward, which I really liked. You saw flashbacks of him and Kurt, like who they once were like and who are, they are now. And he went through it high as hell. Um, that open night mic session that he had first was so sexist and like crazy, not funny. Like, it was just crazy. Also, saw the dynamic he had with uh, Reggie, how they were friends, and the whole Sam situation, which I thought when I found out they were friends, and it was true, which was awkward in that classroom. That edge was funny. Also, um. What's his name? Lino exposing who the troll was, giving that to fame, which was weird. We also got a flashback of him and Sam, what they were, what they are now, understanding Sam more and understanding Troy more. And Troy was just an asshole. He wanted to be liked, but with a bunch of people, he was hurting what he was liking. It was like crazy. The dog also cameoed in this episode. He had a dope moment with his dad with the joint, which ended him being somewhat funny. You know, it was a great episode. It was a stepping stone, a good stepping stone, in my opinion. Uh, episode eight, another favorite episode. Like they just gave me back to back the gay episode. I really relate to gay as an expiring filmmaker. So I really like his perspective on things. He's jumping it off with his documentary as he goes on a sequence of filming people after people after people until he has to film Sam and they have this roaring debate on who's right, who, who knows the struggle, who's angrier, who's this, who's that, which they needed to get out there. Like there's so many moments they could have given up on the conversation and hated each other, but they kept coming back until they made up, which then ended so sad when she found out the news about her dad, because they kind of give you in that episode the fact that, yo, her dad is sick. And she thought her dad was dead because of a troll, but then her dad ended up being dead, which was crazy. Leading to another emotionally deep and touching episode, which episode nine, I really enjoyed episode 9. Episode 9 was a good episode. Like, it started off telling you about who her dad was and how much love her dad had for her and why he will be missed, which was a good perspective and the way her friends were there for her. Did you see how long that hug Joel and Reggie had? That was a crazy moment. And Kate put so much water in the car. <laughs> for a two hour drive dude. No, that was over preparing. Then you know, got a glimpse and there was a whole girl trip situation. Got a glimpse into Sam's family, her aunt, her uncles, her mother, her whole family sat down. Mr. Dad she found out that her dad was sick again and she wasn't told. She gave her beef with her mother, but she was tucked out of the bench by Coco and Joel. She also found out about the secret society. Finding, finding that letter her father left her, like her father always thought about her, which was cute. And also Coco making her feel better about what her father thought about her, even though she was being mean. It's just her passion. He understood it. The funeral was so sad and Logan's performance was amazing. Like, 
yeah it's just a great episode jumping into the last one last one was another trippy moment yo chapter 10 where ricky was so loud and tyler i forgot his name for the show tessa thompson is ricky if you didn't know um her show sold out there was this big hash plan that people were talking about they were showing everybody's point of view from the white people how they felt about their white people at the beginning and how they kind of just brushed it off and how you know at the same time sam was hashing this other plan for ricky but also hashing another plan to her and Lino to find the secret society since they got their ex on the door. Yosukasha, what's his name? L or Lal or whatever his name is, trying to find the surveillance footage of who burned down the other house. So got uh, Troy making menses and just kind of continuing with his life. Free for, like just being the freest dude. Of. The thing I did not expect was Coco and Kurt's relationship, but then when I thought about it, I was like, why didn't I expect it? Like, it makes so much sense for her character. Also, the whole security guard moment, how that dude is going to be a cop now and probably take a life was just a scary thought. Then you also got Lena again, and her funny moment where she went to that woman who's a therapist, who was trying to, <laughs> oh, that is just so funny was basically um it was like yeah here's a gift for you and laid her uh, her face in the boot that was funny as hell uh, a lot of relationships took it to the next step in this episode uh joel and reggie that funny moment where sam walked into the room and they were undressed and they were pretending like they were studying it was funny gabe and sam were back together and even Lino and her and his and his boyfriend took the next step and took 10,000 steps backward when he found out that a dude didn't want to be now miss like he didn't want to settle for anybody he just wanted to fuck also that whole conflict that interaction moment between Tessa Thompson and Logan let me say Sam and Ricky the, the reality check she gave Sam that moment, I was even astounded, like, wow, what she's saying has some merit to it. Then she also got a reality check when she walked out and the whole crowd was black and she was expecting a white crowd because she was about to diminish the black struggle in the whole conversation, which was another thing. Um, what else? The secret society moment, when that dude from... Breaking Bad showed up right before they were gonna give up. <laughs> then that whole post credit scene of who found, who actually burned out the house and it was so stupid and he was trying to build it up to more than what it was. So season overall, I give it a 9 out of 10. There were some character decisions that I did not appreciate. You know what I'm saying? I would have liked to see actually more from Tyler because Thought they were gonna use them both at the end, but Tessa Thompson being the person, like that reality check she gave Sam was worth it. So I guess I, I resent my that pickiness of that situation. Like I said nine out of ten. I'm excited to see where it goes on. I want to see what my boy from Breaking Bad, Maze Runner, and, and even Westworld recently is gonna show Sam and Lionel. I'm really excited. So yeah. Hope you like my review, subscribe if you're not subscribed, deuces.